ho, ho, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, wishing you a happy and white Christmas from Vermont. So, so the snow is falling right now and people have got that Christmas spirit. You know, it really hits you when you got a white Christmas outside. And I'm going to bring to you a kind of a fun video about a little bit of history for, at least for me, this, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of a Vermont country home built by my dad. This is the house that I grew up in. And you'll be able to kind of compare and contrast uh, maybe what we've done differently in our build, some of the things that are the same here when you're building homes for a cold climate, just maybe some design differences, and uh, just to kind of get a sense of what a, another hand-built home is like and something that was built over 30 years ago. So, so I'm going to kind of get, get you started on a little bit of a tour, a property tour, and then to start to talk about the house. So behind me here is the workshop. Now the workshop was added, um, I want to say about 10 years ago. And it's kind of something that came to be, you know, how uh, a lot of men say you need more garage and less house. Well, this was something that was born out of a need for more garage and workshop space. So let's go around and I'll carry you out here and take a look at the uh, from the front of the house coming down the driveway. So when you're coming down the driveway, the workshop is on the right here, got some machinery and then the style of house is what you might call a classic cape style. It's got the dormers for the windows on the front. And then you've got, and then the style of the house is a cedar shake style on the outside of the house. So you've got, you know, a nice wood look to it. And the uh, attached garage leads to a kitchen and then the main living area and the master on the far left here. So the most recent piece of the garage is this little wing onto the right here. This is um, another bay of the garage, but it's actually not for cars. It's actually a work out area. And then behind the house, I'll show you. Coming up on the right here is the woodshed and um, wood furnace. So all the wood gets split and stored in here. And then this area is getting a little bit low, but inside the door, you can see the setup for the wood furnace. So wood fired, big furnace boiler. Now this puts out quite a bit of heat, free heat. If you're thinking that you're getting your wood for free, you're not paying for it. And then all of this, all the piping goes into the house directly. So this kind of flows out down underground and that goes into the house. So that will um, power the rest of the house for heat this way. But that's where this is all stored in the woodshed area. And then we get over to the um, horse barn. So years ago, and it wasn't too many years ago, my parents were in the business of raising Frisian horses. And well, we had some horse stalls. Right now there's um, a hobby inside. It looks like a, an old Corvette, but I could just take you inside and look at the horse barn. But this was a second design. We had an original barn right here and that had burned down in a fire. So this was a rebuild back here and it's uh, more of like a I think it's a six stall barn so we can look take a look inside if, if I've got good enough lighting hey what year is this one guys nice old Corvette here um, so some Blake storage right now because they are the horses are gone they were sold off so one Two, oh, some old insulation here. Three, old refrigerator. Uh, and then four on this side, and then the back one. So it was all fenced in here. Now, this big roller thing is something that dad will attach to the tractor or the, um, the quad, the four wheeler, which currently has uh, tracks on it. And he pulled this behind the the, the quad and um, pack down snow on the trails to for for the purpose of skiing. So that's what this is a he built this himself. 
as a big roller. And Brian and I are thinking about doing this because we've got that big spool from left over from the electric um, cable. So we're thinking about maybe we can do this behind our house. But that's kind of fun. All right, so that's just a quick little tour of the horse barn. It's a little bit run down right now, folks, because we don't have any horses in it. And uh, it's kind of going to get repurposed right now. So let's uh, take a look at the inside of the house. Now, here's the back side. Um, one more recent build was the sunroom right here. This was in the last 10 years as well. And so that was just a little bit of an addition that was added on. The sidewalks, this is a cement concrete sidewalk mixed with colorful flagstone slate. So it's um, held up pretty well. And then the back patio is the stamped concrete. So right now, you know, everything's wet with snow, but the stamped concrete, you know, definitely retains heat. A few days ago, it was just 50, over 55 degrees. So you've um, got a lot of the snow melt going on. But they've definitely been really pleased with the, um, the outcome of the stamped concrete, stamped and stained concrete patio. Hey, looks like you got your wish for a white Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> what you gonna do? Uh, make a snowman. Make a snowman. So, one feature of the kitchen, we've got radiant floor heating in here as well. You can walk around in socks and not get cold feet. Looking up at the kitchen ceiling, this is kind of the style that me and Brian are doing on our ceiling with the tongue and groove. This is with a dark stain and contrast, we've got the hand-hewn beams along the kitchen ceiling, that country style look. And you've got also some antique kitchen items hanging off the beams to kind of complete your country look here. Here's a fun feature of the kitchen, this brick area. It's a, like a brick hearth with a built-in grill, which is now a, like a wine cabinet. But it was, you can see the little handles down here, it was like an operating gas grill. So coming out of the kitchen, we're, the dining room area has, uh, we've got solid oak floors in the dining room area. And this is where I can show you the walls and how thick they are. So it was built as a double. So the, here, here's the first window, double, double window right here. And look, let's look at the thickness of this wall. So here's my hand. You know, we've got about 12 inches here from case to window. And that's um, the double insulation and how it makes your walls extra thick like that. So it's like every window gets like a little bit of a bay window here. The may, it's a, one of the big differences of this home is that the walls are built um, double insulated. So coming out of the dining room area, the living room is up in here. Um, Oh, here's the builder right here. <laughs> yeah, and there's the sleeper. All decorated for Christmas around here. We're working on cookies, it looks like. Making some sugar cookies. Yeah, buddy, getting the dough. Best cookies ever. You dust down your surface and spread it all around so nothing sticks to it. And you dust pretty liberally and then you dust down your rolling pin so your dough doesn't stick to the roller. And then you just cut off a chunk of dough and roll it out. Start with that, you want Yeah. Wait, the recipe said that? What's that? A quarter inch thick? About a quarter inch thick, yeah. Ooh, getting in the pan. 
How about that big one? Okay. We gotta make. Okay, I finished one. Oh, yeah. YouTube. Mm, so delicious. YouTube. So, YouTube. so when you've been in a house for 30 years and more, you are always looking to upgrade. And so now the latest thing that dad is wanting to do to improve the house is looking at the heating system, doing a heat pump install. These are a couple of exterior units for Mitsubishi electric heat pump. And dad says this is the newest thing in building in Vermont, especially. They're very popular because of the efficiency and because you can save so much money using a heat pump system to heat the house. So he's wanting to install these. He's got one in the master bedroom and he's going to be installing one in the kitchen. So I'm going to take you through that process. So that's where it's going? So it's going right here. Here's my template. Mm. Oh shit, I can't hook it there. I gotta hope I can fit it there. Might be. I got, I got four and a half. I got four and a half. Oh, there's the wall. No, and the pipes are going to come from the cellar up through the floor. And the pipes on the unit go in here. There's two pipes and one power. Oh, so it does run on water. Or uh, heat. It runs on refrigerant. Refrigerant. The pipes are not water, they're refrigerant. It's like inside of a refrigerator. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. That's the next thing. Then I gotta bring the unit in, put the stuff. I gotta run the pipes through. That's what I need help. Probably get Brian to he can help me. Because mm -hmm. I gotta come through the cellar. I got a hole already done here. Oh, it's a secret, little secret hiding spot behind the bureau. See, so there's a hole right there where I'm gonna run my pipes down. Okay. Right through that hole, I got two pipes and then the electrical wire mm -hmm. go from up there down through there, mm -hmm. and the electrical wire goes all the way out to the unit outdoors. <coughs> and, that, and those two pipes. So they covered or are they exposed on the wall? No, you don't see them. So they just run up the wall yeah. on the inside of they the just wall. Just run up inside. What I'm gonna do, I think. Try to run it. That run. There's a pipe in the cellar. I'm gonna try to run it up through that hole behind the insulation all the way up mm -hmm. through there. Then I can run that wire down there. Mm -hmm. And once I get the wire down there, I don't know. It's gonna be fun. To try to run those other two pipes hmm. it up there. So then I'm gonna wait on that till I get some help for now. Get it started, but so these this will come out. I think I don't know. I, think, I don't know. I'll come put pieces in there. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but I did. So it makes it easier in a way. I could take them all out, then it'd be easy. Mm -hmm. I still got one of these after this plastic. Yeah. Then I got six inches on the other side. Oh. So that's like I had twelve inches. Uh huh. So I couldn't you spare this one little bay yeah. here to make it easier to pull. Yeah, so this, this I can run in after. I got one more right here. I could probably put some of them back mm -hmm. once I get the pipes in. Yeah, shove yeah. Them shove them up in there. See, then I can run my pipes. If I didn't have no insulation, I wouldn't. Yeah be easy. Mm -hmm. Sticking pipes up from the cellar right up through. Mm -hmm. ah, Boom. Two holes. <laughs> 
right now. Oh, I know. Maybe I got them all. Well. Oh, but it's like a special yeah, kind of pipe. A special kind of pipe. It's a pipe for the refrigerant. Yeah, copper. Yeah, quite some more copper so you can bend it. So then you get a tank. Uh -huh. You get a tank. Tank. A tank to for the refrigerant down here. It's in, it's in the outside unit. Oh, sorry, sorry there's that. Okay, there's an outside. So once I put that, I should have a little cap. It's kind of like a foam. Yeah, that's just our foam, I think. If I can open it up, kind of open it up, unroll it, otherwise I can kind of put it in straight. Then I'm going to try to push it, pull it all the way across. Okay. I'll go that way. So where does it go to the outside? Right here. Yeah. Oh, pipe okay. Up there. Uh huh. I got to stuff in it now so I don't get cold. But it, I'll shove them both through that and the wire. Uh huh. And the unit's right there, about oh. two, two feet on the outside. Okay. So it comes across and then up. Up that hole up there to the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. It comes pre-coiled, yeah. You don't straighten it out because it makes it a little harder to push it up. But you can't straighten it all. Hmm. Okay, go upstairs. I'm trying to find it. Here it comes. Okay, got it. Okay, I got it at the mark. Electrical pipe. Mm -hmm. The electric. I don't know exactly where these pipes are coming right dead center almost. So that's what I got. Mm -hmm. I got to go get that other unit. Did them. No, this one I know, but in the rest of the house I had a half inch insulation blackboard. Oh yeah. Behind the plastic. Okay. This one I didn't do it on this one. But this is 12 inches total foam. Yeah. What's that, an R value? R42. 42. It's an episode of Vermont Country Living. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi, folks. It's mom. <laughs> Amy's mom. Nice to meet you. <laughs> what are you making? We bread. We are making bread. Very simple recipe. Mm -hmm. Tonight we're having spaghetti. Homemade bread. Oh, spaghetti and homemade bread. And it's James! <laughs> Nephew Hi. James, Mount Colorado Mountain Living fan. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> smells good. Fresh bread. And so these are the outside units for the heat pumps. So the outside units stay out here. So he built a little shelf for them, a little bench. And then, as Dad was explaining, they get connected to, I guess this is where the circulating Freon is generated, and then you get the electrical boxes, the conduit that we'll have to connect. This was the pipe that we saw down in the basement, in, this, in, the, um, in the joist there. So this is where the cables will run from the outside units into the basement of the house, and then up into the, the wall units from there. So this one is Mitsubishi. What model are we looking at? Split system heat pump. What do you guys think of heat pumps? Apparently they're the new hot way to heat and cool your home. Everyone's installing them apparently and it may be the technology has improved and the prices come down but after 30 years of doing wood stove heat and furnace action, dad is convinced that heat pump is the way to go. And he's installing them throughout the house. One unit in the kitchen, one unit in the living room, and one unit in the master bedroom. And I think the mat, the bedroom unit's already connected. Yeah, I wish I had that thing. Put it on. Well, it was so clear. More. So condensing, the condensate comes out of here. Yep. So relatively easy to thread the electric line down the wall as well as the condensing coil. You just kind of shove those down the hole that you created, 
but the trickier part is connecting the actual copper tubing to the system uh, and getting the angle right. So these, this is the part where it's like a two-person job. You're going to have to, someone's going to have to hold the unit in place exactly while the other person's doing the connecting. Close, I can try to hook them together, then push them back. Yeah. That'd be tricky. That's the part. That's the hard part. Because I can't really pull these out and bring them way down here. Right. Oh, just to lift it and get it like well, a few inches away. Pretty hard to bend them. Oh, he said he put it in the back. Seat. Like yeah. So there's my halfway mark. So it, my connection's going to be almost way back here on yeah. the big one. Yeah. This one's shorter. This longer. Yeah. Bad. These weren't. What I was gonna do is bend them, mm -hmm. and then you know, and make a con then uh, make a connection and go down with them. Bend them two ways, like this one's bent, then mm -hmm. bend it again this way. Yeah. So it goes. That's or bend it. I have to bend it up. Yeah. You have to bring it backwards and yeah. go up this way. That's the bottom. Yeah. Having the 2 by 4 in place gives them a spot to rest the unit while they try to figure out the positioning of where the copper tubes have to connect to the unit. So a lot of this right now is just trying to figure out the exact positioning because there's not a lot of leeway. You actually have to have the unit in the exact position in the center of the template with the hoses connected exactly where they need to be. So they're just trying to get the angle right and figure out how they're going to have to bend the very ends of the copper tubing so that they can get the connection just right. So just a lot of finagling going on right here, if that's what you want to call it. But it's just a lot of angling and finagling to get those connections on. So this is the part of the job where it ends up being like a two-man job. You've got to have one person holding on to the unit exactly, keeping it in position while the other person's able to make those connections without having to worry about keeping the unit out of the way. There's probably another creative way that someone else has thought of to, to get this working, but um, for now, this is ha resting one end on a 2 by 4 while the other person holds on to the unit. And the second person is making the connections, and then they're free to put the unit into place after everything's connected and tucked back into spot. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wasting your time. Oh. Got <laughs> <laughs> more onion in it. Just gotta get that one out. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now the delicate job of finding that exact position, it's kind of like when you're hanging a painting and you're not exactly sure how to slide that, hang those hangers into place. So it's just trying to find, there's like three clips on the back that uh, where it connects on each end and in the middle. So they're just trying to slide those into place. You should let him have Instagram. No way. I had Instagram for free. No, social media. Bands. Yeah. Now it is right in here. Hey folks, so here we are. It's all said and done. The wall unit heat pump is installed in the kitchen. So not too bad of a job. I know we didn't see all the stages of like connecting all the hoses downstairs and to the outside, but apparently there's one more piece that needs to happen, and that is to have a one of the technicians for the unit come out and flush the system with air to make sure it's dry before they actually connect the hoses and the Freon and all of that and get it running. So there's one final step that has to happen before getting the unit turned on. But 
I'd love to hear your experiences with heat pumps and what do you guys think about them because I know my dad's convinced that it's like the latest greatest thing and it's really going to cut down on his wood use. I think he's looking to reduce the labor consumption and, and use, using less wood and especially if uh, you want to heat with something besides propane, it's definitely a backup option. So the heat pump, who knew? And he's convincing us we should install one in our house. What do you guys think? But I hope you enjoyed this little foray into uh, the country life of Vermont and a little bit of a tour of my childhood home and stomping grounds. And uh, wish you guys the best holiday season. We'll see you in the new year. All right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>